This is how you make a concrete candle jar without using cementol. Watch closely because I finally found the perfect formula for those who don't have access to cementol, but, and this is a big but, if you don't listen to everything I have to say about this formula, you could be setting yourself up for failure. But what makes a good formula? What do successful concrete candle makers who don't use cementol know that you don't. My new formula is comprised of four easy to remember ingredients and this guide will walk you through them all. Let's go. Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. After two previous attempts, I finally created an easy to use formula using cement, plaster, sand, and water. That's a game changer. However, you need to understand that not all cement, plaster, sand, and water are made the same. Think of it like this. Tomato sauce and ketchup are both made of tomatoes, but tomato sauce usually has minimal ingredients while ketchup consistently contains vinegar, sugar, and spices. So when you have a desire to make pasta marinara for dinner, Guess what never crosses your mind? The ketchup bottle. Now here are four ingredients you will need for my new formula. Cement, try to find regular Portland cement. If you can't find that, then a rapid setting cement should be fine. Plaster, plaster of Paris is the weakest of all plasters out there, but if that's all you can find, so be it. If you can find something stronger, go with that. Sand, no, you can't use sand from the beach. Taking sand from the beach is often illegal due to environmental concerns. Plus, and more importantly, crabs and other animals, including humans, do their business in the sand. Quick story. Many years ago, I was at the beach with my family. I was waist deep in the water holding my two-year-old daughter. Out of the blue, she says, Dad, I gotta pee. My first thought was just go in the ocean like everyone else does. But then I decided, this would be a good teaching moment, so I carried her back to shore so I could take her to the bathroom. And once I hit the sand, I put her down, and as I do so, her face starts to change, and she gives me this really intense stare. And after a moment, she goes, okay, let's go back in. I'm like, wait, you just said you needed to pee. And she says, I just did, Dad, let's go. So no beach sand. Construction or building sand is usually the best because it's free of chemicals, including two-year-old tinkle. Water. I use regular tap water, but if you live in a part of the world where your water, how shall I say, sucks, then it might not be worth it to use. In that case, look for a purified or distilled water. Those are the four ingredients you're going to need. Now, before I share the mixing ratio you're going to use, take a look at this. If you're new to the world of creating concrete candle jars or you feel lost and just want to improve your skills, I've got something awesome for you. It's called the Winning Formula, a comprehensive course that covers everything you need to know from the basics of working with concrete to mastering your formula through the skillful use of color pigments this course has got you covered. It's not just about teaching you how to do something, but ensuring you understand it fully so you can confidently take action. The best part, you'll have direct access to me through my private community, which means you'll save valuable time, money, and avoid a boatload of headaches. I'm here to support you every step of the way. And in addition to all of that, inside the course, you'll discover an amazing collection of bonus resources that you won't want to miss. None of this stuff is public on my YouTube channel. These extras will take your learning experience to a whole new level and help you become a pro at making concrete candle jars. Check out the link in the description for more details and start elevating your concrete candle jar making skills today. Let's go. The mixing ratio is quite simple. It's a one to one to one dry mix ratio with a one part water addition along with a one hour demolding time. That means that each part's number is exactly the same so there's no overthinking. So once you find out how many grams your silicone mold takes, 
you can easily find the dry mix ratio by dividing that number by three and then add in one additional part of water and it's done. For example, if I know a silicone mold takes 300 grams of mixture to fill up, and by the way, a mixture includes both dry mix and water, then all I have to do is find out my dry mix ratio. So 300 grams of mixture divided by three, which is my dry mix ratio, equals 100. Because each part is equal, I know I need 100 grams of cement, 100 grams of plaster, and 100 grams of sand. That equals 300, which is my dry mix ratio. However, all dry mixes need water. So to find the water content, all you have to do is add another additional part to the equation, which is 100 grams of water. It's that simple. And the best part is you don't need to rush with my new formula because it won't harden on you as you start to pour. To show you what I mean, I'm going to create three concrete candle jars so you can see the awesomeness. One in white, another in tan, and a third in black. To make a white concrete candle jar, we need all our ingredients to be white. We need white cement, white plaster, and white sand. To make things even easier, I'm going to use this silicone mold that takes a little less than 300 grams of mixture to make a candle jar. But for mathematical purposes, we will say 300 grams because I know there are some people who just hate math. Oh my God, math. Math. Plus 300 grams also corresponds to my example above. Get a bowl and add 100 grams of water and put that to the side. Then get another bowl and take 100 grams of cement, 100 grams of plaster, and 100 grams of sand and place that inside. Now start mixing so all the contents are equally distributed throughout. After you're done, bring back your bowl of water and start adding in the 300 grams of contents. Once it's all in, start stirring so that you get a nice workable consistency. Then place your silicone mold on your vibrating machine, turn it on, and start adding in your contents. It's that simple. And guess what? The best part is you only have to wait one hour to demold your concrete candle jar. All right, an hour has passed and now it's time to demold our white concrete candle jar and here it is look at how this came out it's solid and super white what's cool about this recipe is that you don't have to hurry to pour it into your silicone mold and it only takes an hour to demold but i want to show you more so let's put that to the side and start on the tan concrete candle jar in order to make a tan concrete candle jar you need to have regular cement and regular sand. The plaster is always white, but it won't affect the color at all. So again, let's take 100 grams of water and put that to the side. Then get another bowl and take 100 grams of cement, 100 grams of plaster, and 100 grams of sand and place that inside. Now start mixing so all the contents are equally distributed throughout. After you're done, bring back your bowl of water and start adding in the 300 grams of contents. Once it's in, start stirring so that you get a nice workable consistency. Then place your silicone mold on your vibrating machine, turn it on, and start adding in your contents. And just like before, it's that simple. Now let's wait an hour to demold it and we'll be right back. All right, an hour has passed and now it's time to demold my tan concrete candle jar. And here it is. I love how this came out. Again, it's solid, but this time it's more of a natural color, which I love. But we have one more to do. Let's move that to the side as well. And now we're going to create our black concrete candle jar. In order to make a black concrete candle jar, you're going to use the same contents as you did when you made a tan candle jar. But this time you're going to add in black pigment. So again, let's take 100 grams of water and put that to the side. Then get another bowl and take 100 grams of regular cement, 
100 grams of plaster and 100 grams of natural sand and place that inside. Now start mixing so that all the contents are equally distributed throughout. Then you're going to add in black pigment, but when adding black pigment, you need to add up to or no more than 5% of your mixture. Our mixture consists of 300 grams minus the water. So what is 5% of 300? Oh, oh, a few fries short of a Happy Meal. <laughs> is it 15? Yes. So let's add in 15 grams of black pigment on top of our 300 grams of dry mix and mix that together as well. After you're done, bring back your bowl of water and start adding in your contents. Once it's all in, start stirring so that you get a nice workable consistency. Then place your silicone mold on your vibrating machine, turn it on and start adding in your contents. And once again, we're gonna wait one hour. All right, an hour has passed and now it's time to demold our black concrete candle jar. And here it is. Isn't this awesome? It's solid and super black, just like I wanted. Here are all three together, side by side by side. Which one do you like best? Personally, I like them all, but I am partial to the black one because I just love black concrete. Now, one of the questions I get all the time is, does Jay's formula work for making candles? Well, the only way to know for sure is by showing you. So take a look at this candle. I burned it all the way down until it's self extinguished. No cracks, no leaks, and you wanna know what? No problem. Hopefully that proves that the formula works. Now, I know we've covered a lot in this video and for good reason. Making concrete candle jars without the convenience of products like cemento is a real challenge. However, if there's one thing you should remember most about what we learned today, it's that if there is a desire to do it, there is a way to do it. To help you out, you can download my new formula to have all the information you need at your convenience. I'll put a link down in the description so you can download it for free. And here's the thing, the next time you go and you make a concrete candle jar, it might not be perfect, or the next one after that, but guess what? There's no such thing as a perfect concrete candle. Concrete candles are just as much an art form as a science and balancing the two is not always an easy task. However, with my formula, you should be able to find solid success much faster than if you were going at it alone. And take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're gonna help you on your concrete, hydrostone, and candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching, ciao.